Houston, we've had a problem. Stand by, 13, we're looking at it. On the 11th of April 1970, astronauts Tom Hanks, Kevin Bacon and Bill Paxton blasted off from Cape Canaveral atop a Saturn V rocket destined for the third mission to land on the moon. But things didn't go according to plan. Now this mission was eerily designated Apollo 13. Sorry, what? It actually happened. It wasn't just a movie. Blimey. Welcome to the English Watch. <sighs> Hi, I'm Andy, and in this edition of the English Watch, we look at the Apollo 13 mission, but more importantly for a watch channel, the role that the Speedmaster played within it, and the subsequent special editions that Omega have released. And we ask ourselves, where the hell is our Silver Snoopy 50th anniversary watch? Now before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe to this video, and don't forget to check out some of my other videos, especially the ones on the Speedmaster. Please also check me out on Instagram, and I'm currently developing theenglishwatch.com, a website where I hope to put a lot of the text from these videos and some of the other imagery and documentation that I've collected over this time. So I won't go into the Apollo 13 mission too much. There's some great reference points out there, I've put some links in the description at the end of this video, so please go and check them out. There's some good stuff out there, and they can take into far more detail than I can possibly do in this short video. On April the 13th, Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swaggart were 56 hours and 200,000 miles into their mission to the moon, when one of the oxygen tanks exploded following an electrical fault. The astronauts survived the mission by quick thinking on their part, and that of the ground crew by closing off the command module and moving to the lunar lander. This enabled them to preserve power in the command module so they could make the final approach to Earth. During their time in the lunar module, they endured freezing temperatures and cramped conditions. Using all of their training and their trusty Omega Speedmasters, the crew were able to make it home safely. The astronauts used their standard issue Speedmasters to time a number of important engine burns to ensure the slingshot around the moon and subsequent angle of return allowed them to successfully splash down with very few course corrections. This brings us on to the Snoopy Award. In 1968, NASA chose the famous Beagle as an icon to act as a sort of watchdog over its missions. In the same year, NASA decided to use sterling silver Snoopy pin as a sign of appreciation to NASA employees and contractors together with a commendation letter and a signed framed Snoopy certificate. Each of the sterling silver Snoopy label pins has been flown during a NASA mission. Cartoonist Charles M. Schultz, who created the Peanuts comic strip, was a supporter of the NASA Apollo missions and agreed to let them use the Snoopy, the astronaut, at no extra cost and even drew the Snoopy figure for the sterling silver label pin. Unusually, the Snoopy Award is awarded by the astronauts themselves. This is an appreciation for dedication, professionalism and outstanding contributions in support of the first United States manned lunar landing project. For Apollo 13, this award went to a number of contributors and contractors who supported the safe return of the crew, including the Omega Watch Company. So what have Amiga done previously to commemorate this achievement? Well, up until the early 2000s, Amiga didn't do much at all to capitalise on the whole Moonwatch thing. There'd always be collectors and people who knew these things. But as a space nut myself, growing up in the 70s and 80s, I didn't come across any of this. And reading some of my astronaut books from that time, and looking inside, although it never referenced the, the watches, they are always there in plain sight, hiding from me. Why didn't I know? In 2003, Omega launched reference 3578.51, the Snoopy Award edition, to commemorate, well, nothing specific really, but nonetheless, at less than 5,441 pieces, this edition was a hit with the collectors. The odd number of pieces available refers back to the mission duration, 142 hours, 54 minutes and 41 seconds. So taking the minutes and the seconds. Very convenient. This is a discrete special edition of a standard manual wine Speedmaster Professional with the 1861 movement. With just a Snoopy in a spacesuit replacing the constant seconds dial and an enameled image of Snoopy with eyes on the stars in gold print on the reverse. The 45th anniversary watch was released in 2005 at Baselworld and marked 45 years since the Apollo mission and stood out from the 2003 model in a number of ways. The first being that the dial is Snoopy white and instead of a space Snoopy on the seconds dial, 
there lies a dreamy, eyes closed Snoopy with a thought bubble and a famous NASA words, failure is not an option. Not wishing to miss out on the significance, Amiga draws attention to the first 14 seconds with the words, what could you do in 14 seconds? To give some context to the purpose the watch played in the safe return of the crew by accurately timing those critical engine burns. There are a few extra details that make this watch a novelty and not just a custom Speedmaster professional. And that may explain how its unicorn status with prices in excess of three times its original $7,000 price tag. Firstly, it's far more limited than the 2003 edition at 1,970 pieces. And even though it has a regular 1861 movement beating at its heart, it has a sapphire crystal and ceramic bezel with Luminova inlays making it more durable and upscale than the standard model. On the rear, there is a hand engraved silver Snoopy set on a blue enameled medallion. Okay, so where's the 50th anniversary one then? Well, Amiga released the previous editions in the Spring Bars Award show, close to the Apollo dates in April, but these releases aligned more to the show than the actual anniversary. And given that Omega pulled out of Bars Award in 2019, and is now staggering its launches through the year, there's no reason why we can't expect the special editions to land on the actual dates, or very close. With the Apollo 11 50th anniversary in 2019, Amiga released a number of special editions in the early part of the year ahead of the July anniversary date. We saw the steel and gold 50th anniversary edition with additional models from the Plasm edition with the reimagined 3 to one movement and meteorite subdials, the 18 karat moonshine gold with red ceramic bezel and the Ed White special edition with the 3 to one movement and the smaller case. So the dates of the Apollo 13 have lapsed with only reference to the missions on the Omega website. But wait! If you're a follower of Omega on Instagram, you may have noticed the Snoopy badge appear on their profile page. And on clicking it, Amiga have put together a three panel story saying they wish to salute the 50th anniversary of the Snoopy Award on the 5th of October. So let's consider the significance here. Previously, Amiga released special editions to celebrate the success of others who have used their tool watches to be successful in their endeavors, such as the Apollo missions but it looks like this next anniversary will be more a celebration of Omega themselves, having played their part in the successful return of the three Apollo 13 astronauts by providing a reliable and accurate piece of flight gear that fulfilled its role exceptionally, and is a testament to the way Omega engineers its timepieces to this day and why I remain a fan of the brand. This reminds us that without the standard issue Omega Speedmaster Professional the outcome could have been very different. Just imagine if a Hamilton, a Breitling, or God forbid, a Rolex had beaten Omega in the flight qualification test back in 1962. So what could Omega offer us? It would be easy to do another version of the 2015 piece, but this would be a little cynical, and I expect given the 2019 releases, some gold will be involved. I also believe this could be around the same time Omega launched the updated Speedmaster Professional as discussed in my previous video, link in the description. So this could be a platform to shout from and let the world know that there's a new Speedmaster in town. I believe the watch will be similar in design to the Apollo 11 and have the 3861 coaxial movement as will all Speedmaster professionals going forward. It will have a ceramic dial and sapphire crystal and will undoubtedly have a commemorative medallion on the back with the Ice of the Stars text and a Snoopy figure featuring somewhere. Other than that, expect to see a subtle reference on the seconds register involving Snoopy in the dancing astronaut pose, very similar to the 2003 version, albeit with some modern techniques Omega have adopted, maybe using laser engraving. It will be fitted with a still version of the Apollo 11 bracelet, which I believe will be the new standard fit bracelet, as well as the usual accessory straps. How many will they make? Well, all three Apollo 11 editions were limited numbers, with the 50th having the highest run of 6,969 pieces. Given the alignment to the anniversary year, we could expect as many as 7,070 pieces. But this appears to be a little high to me, so it could be aligned to the 2003 edition of only 5,441. 
I think Omega would definitely release more than the 1,970 pieces of the 2015 edition, and may make it a limited run such as the Apollo 8 instead of limited edition, but I see this as less likely. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this edition of the English Watch. I certainly enjoyed researching it and finding out about Apollo 13 and this Snoopy Award. And let me know how excited you are about the October release and will you be putting your name down like I will be for when that thing comes out. Please leave any comments at the end of the video and like I said before, don't forget to subscribe, check me out on Instagram, give me the thumbs up and I'll see you again soon. Take care then. Bye now. But nonetheless, 5,441 pieces.